What's going on guys? So you're joining me inside of our 2023 GMC Denali 1500 pickup truck. This is the Duramax 3.0 powered truck. So this is the LZO engine. And I think a lot of folks probably already know pretty much all about this specific truck because I've made quite a few videos on it. But we are just about to approach 9,000 miles. We're about 100 miles shy of that. Um, by the time this video is done, we'll probably be at about 9,000 miles. Not that this video is going to take the entire 100 miles, but you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, I wanted to give you guys kind of an update on this truck. 9,000 miles is certainly long enough to know if you like a truck or not, if you would buy a truck again or not, and what your overall impressions of that vehicle are. So. I feel like I can give you a pretty comprehensive overview on what I love about this truck, some regrets I may have, as well as things that I just don't care for in general about this truck. So hang tight, I'll be right back. All right, so uh, kicking things off, we bought this truck right at the end of 2022. Uh, the dealership had just gotten it in, and again, the specific truck that I was hunting for was really any 2023 model GMC crew cap four-wheel drive pickup truck with the three liter baby Duramax LZO diesel engine in it. Uh, the fact is they were hard to find unless you ordered one. So of the eight or nine dealerships that I looked at, a few places had the truck, but they were spoken for, there were deposits down on them. And it was that whole game of somebody's already you know, put a deposit on this truck, but I might be able to get it for you. And what I didn't want to do is I didn't want to deal with this dealership game of having to overpay for a vehicle when somebody probably didn't actually have a deposit down on it. So I found a dealership that had this Denali pickup truck in stock. Uh, it's not the ideal package that I would have picked if I built the truck. I probably would have gone a step down in trim but a step up in terms of cargo capacity and towing capacity by going with the max trailering package, which this truck does not have. It does have the towing package though. So it has all the towing technology. It's got the trailer brake controller. Um, it's got the you know two inch receiver in the back, seven way connector, the trailer camera connectors, uh, and then the bedside connector as well. So it's got all the connectors you know you would need to tow a trailer. And I've made several videos towing trailers with this truck already. And uh, you know, it, it does fairly well whenever you don't put a trailer that's too large or too heavy behind it. But it's definitely a lighter truck and that lighter weight lends itself to sometimes a little bit more of a, let's just say a, a trailer controlling ride. And what I mean by that is the trailer kind of controls how the truck drives. All that said though, uh, the truck's been a really good truck. I'm, I'm a fan of it. I like the truck. It, it's got a lot of perks that absolutely outweigh the things that I don't care for in the truck to a degree. Let me kind of explain that. So this truck gets ridiculously good fuel economy. And when I say ridiculously good, if I drive with kind of a tender foot and I'm light on the accelerator and I just you know pay attention to when the truck's idling and if I can use the auto engine off feature, all of that, I can get like 28 to 29 miles per gallon in the city. That's absolutely insane. Uh, that That's like economy vehicle type fuel economy. And to be able to get upwards of 28 miles per gallon in the city in a full size four wheel drive crew cab pickup truck is insane. And that alone elevates this truck to a level that very, very few half ton trucks can match. Um, so much so that I find myself at gas stations filling up with diesel and people next to me like yesterday, it actually happened. Somebody in a Tundra next to me actually said, hey, uh, what kind of fuel economy do you get out of that? And I was like, uh, you're not gonna believe me if I tell you, it's it's pretty ridiculous. And he goes, what are you getting? And he was in a Tundra and I owned a Tundra before, so I know what that 5.7 liter gets. And I told him, you know, in the city on a bad day, like 22 miles per gallon, on a good day, nearly 28 to 29 miles per gallon. And on the highway, uh, I can usually get between 29 and 34 miles per gallon, depending on you know what the conditions are like. If it's windy, if I have a tailwind, things like that. But um, I get about 750 miles to a tank on this thing pretty regularly, which 
again, is insane for this type of truck. And that alone makes this truck a ridiculously good value. Now I know pickup trucks are insanely expensive, so I get that, and I'm factoring that in. I understand that, you know, this truck cost me $75,000. That is not a little bit of money. That is a lot of money. It's probably beyond the budget of what most people can pay. That said, however, you could get this truck with this baby Duramax in it in a non-Denali package, stripped down quite a bit more. If you're looking for the fuel economy, and you'd, you'd get arguably better fuel economy because the truck would be lighter, but you could get one for probably the mid-50s. Let's just say mid-50s to low-60s. And have a truck that would outperform almost any comparable vehicle in all reasonable performances, but at the same time, it would give you the capability of having a lot of utility, a lot of storage, a lot of cargo, while being able to handle, you know, marginally small trailers, and even tow your boat, things like that, in a really, really great package that's very reliable, but getting ridiculously good fuel economy. Isn't that kind of like the holy grail vehicle for a lot of folks? A vehicle that can do all these different things, but also do it while sipping on fuel. That's probably the best part. So I'm not gonna rant on how great the fuel economy on this truck is anymore. I just wanted to share that that's probably the single biggest positive attribute this truck has. There's a lot of really cool features, but that's probably it. Um, now I'm gonna make this kind of a compliment sandwich. So I'll, I'll bounce between the things I love and the things that probably could be a little different. Um, I hate the seats in this truck. I've made videos talking about that. I've, I've shared that in multiple videos that I do not like the seats in this truck. The seats in this truck to me, um, they actually make my back hurt and my butt hurt. They're just not comfortable to me. They are way too firm. Now this is completely a subjective review here. This is not what every individual person is gonna think. Some people may absolutely love these seats, but the running consensus from me, as well as my wife, as well as friends that hop in the truck, are that these seats are way too firm. Uh, they, they don't give hardly at all. And over long trips, they actually don't become more comfortable. They just, they're just not that comfortable of a seat in my opinion. The bolstering on the back is way too firm. The lumbar support really doesn't help much. The bottom cushion is too firm as well. I'm not a fan of them. Uh, I would, uh, well I say I would, but we own the truck so I could probably figure a way to make them more comfortable or add something to them. But I really, really do not like how these seats feel. And the minute I hop out of this truck and I hop into my F450, or shoot, even when I hopped into the Ram uh, 1500 trucks, the base model trucks, and the GMC Denali Ultimate that I drove, the 2500, that has the massaging seats, all those seats felt better than the seats in this Denali pickup truck, which is kind of a shame, because when you buy, a, when you buy a Denali, you just expect it to have you know, the best of the best seats, even if you're not getting the ultimate package. So uh, everything I've tried hasn't necessarily helped too much except putting a big cushion under my butt whenever I, whenever I drive this truck, which does seem to help a little bit. So it's not so much the back bolstering as it is the, the seat bolstering. It just doesn't feel that great. All right, so that's something that I don't care for. Something I, I've learned to really like though is the infotainment system. So I know that it's not the largest out there. Diagonally speaking, it might be, as far as just the overall you know, diagonal inches, but whenever you compare this to some other trucks, they have a larger overall screen. Whenever you look at the size of the, the amount of information that's provided to you. And I don't think going with a larger overall screen is necessarily a benefit. I say that because the screen in this truck is very wide, it's very expansive, but it's also very easy to navigate and to get to the things you're trying to get to without having to look at this giant screen while you're trying to drive. So this screen doesn't feel like a distraction when I'm using it. It feels very intuitive. Now what I don't really care for is how long some things take sometimes. But I think that's just kind of the world we live in now with touch screens and vehicles. Things take a little longer to access. You press a button, it has to think for a little while. And that's not exclusive to GM. I know Ford and Ram vehicles are kind of the same way. You press a button, it's not instant. And sometimes it takes you looking at the screen a little longer than you feel is safe 
to just get to a spot or an area that you're trying to get to on that screen. Uh, the, the challenge with this system is that, well, it's a challenge and it's also a perk. So the perk is that it uses, you know, Google. So if I wanted to make a command, a voice command, I can do it very easily. It's, it's a very intuitive system. It's very much like using your smartphone. The downside to it, however, is the time it sometimes takes to boot, to load up whenever you start the vehicle, or to switch between screens, or to take a command and actually turn it into an action. And that can be kind of frustrating, to be honest. Uh, it's just, it's one of those things to where we all want a lot of technology in these vehicles now. Even if we claim we don't, I think most people are pretty happy when they get a vehicle that has a lot of tech. The downside to it, though, is, is the fact that we have to deal with that tech, and that tech sometimes is slower, clunkier, or more janky than you expect it to be. But overall, I like the system. Overall, I like its execution. I like what it's capable of providing a driver in terms of you know, navigation, as in terms of uh, adjusting things like your climate control, all of that. It's a great system. It's just kind of like everything else. The newer things get, the more technology they tie into it, sometimes a little slower uh, this technology gets. Now, Moving on from that, um, again, I like the interior of this truck. I probably would say it's one of the nicest, if not the nicest interiors you can get in a pickup truck. And now that the Super Duty, and now that the Heavy Duty Truck Series carries the same interior, uh, arguably it's one of the nicest interiors available. And I say that because I know Ram has more of a classy look to it. It has more of like a traditional ranch kind of luxury look to it, like a kind of a cowboy flair. Um, whereas the, the GM trucks have more of a modern feel to it. It's, it's kind of an interesting feel inside of the truck. It's different than what Ram does. Uh, Ford is kind of in a weird middle ground there. Their trucks look nice on the interior, but they still feel very much like a, a pickup truck. They still feel like you're, you're driving in a pickup truck, and they haven't kind of crossed that bridge to make you feel like you're more like in a luxury SUV. But overall, interior's nice, execution's nice. Um, I do not care for the fact that they do not have 12 volt outlets in here. I've brought that up in several videos. There has been more than one occasion where I could have used them. And not having them is, is a bit, it's a bit disappointing to me, to be honest. Considering every other truck on the market you buy has them, except the newer General Motors trucks. Um, having at least two 12 volt outlets in this truck would be really nice. It's kind of like when they took away air conditioning vents in the back seat. They're probably thinking, well, there's enough air volume coming out of the front. We don't need them, so let's get rid of them. But then they brought them back a few years later because they realized people really like to have air conditioning on them in the back seat. And that was one of those things that, that thankfully was able to be reintroduced into their newer trucks. Um, the other thing is, is I wish that the interior had another 110 outlet in the back, uh, mainly because that's also a very popular outlet whenever you're trying to connect things in your vehicle. It has one in the glove box or in the center console, but they really should have a second one, which they don't have. Now, um, those are just kind of the interior things. As far as things I like about the interior, I've gone over some of those. I love the little pockets in the back seats. Those are super cool. Um, I do not like the amount of storage you get underneath the back seat. I feel like they have much, much more readily accessible real estate if they would have put a larger carrying bin back there. And I've talked about that in videos as well. So it'd be really nice to see if they could put something larger that could, you know, give you more under seat storage that's in a kind of a confined area. Uh, and then let's talk about engine oil. So I know my, my, my friend over at pickup trucks and SUV talk, they, um, they have a truck. It's a 2023 model Chevy Silverado high country, and it has the same three liter LZO diesel engine in it. And he has mentioned several times that his truck burns oil or eats oil or, or oil disappears in his truck. And I decided to check my oil to see if I was also experiencing that and I'm not. I'm not experiencing any reduction in the amount of oil in this truck. Um, and that's 9,000 miles of driving or almost 9,000 miles of driving. And I haven't lost any oil in this truck. Now, elevation, geography, all of this stuff may factor into it. Um, we're pretty close to sea level over here. We have very humid days. It gets very hot outside. Um, I've done some towing with this truck, so I don't know if that accounts for any of it or not. But 
I haven't noticed any loss of, uh, of engine oil in this vehicle, which is really nice. So I was kind of afraid of it when I saw the videos and I saw people you know, bring it up. But again, we haven't experienced any of it in this truck. But aside from that, the, uh, the truck's been a really great truck. Um, as far as towing performance payload, you know, for being a super high trim truck, not the highest, but for being a pretty dang high trim truck, it's got over 1,400 pounds of overall cargo capacity, 880 pounds worth of conventional hitch towing capacity from a hitch weight perspective, 8,800 pounds worth of towing capacity, and uh, I don't even want to bring up fifth wheel gooseneck because that doesn't really even apply to something like this, but, you know, the numbers are pretty dang good because it does everything I need this type of truck to do. If I wanted to be able to tow more, I would get a bigger truck. If I wanted to be able to handle more weight, I would get a bigger truck. But when you get something like this, the main thing you're looking for is ride comfort, mixed in with utility, mixed in with reasonable towing and payload numbers. And this truck has all of that. But the one area where this truck definitely excels way beyond almost any other truck in this category is fuel economy, which is typically the sacrifice when you have decent numbers everywhere else. And this truck has ridiculously good fuel economy. So again, I circle back to that because you need to understand that when you look at a truck like this, you are looking, of course, at the things you like about the truck from a features, amenities, towing capability perspective. But most times people just assume that half ton trucks are gonna suffer greatly when it comes to fuel economy. And this truck is kind of proof that it, it, it doesn't have to be that way. Um, it completely destroys my wife's expedition and she's got the 3.5 liter high output EcoBoost engine. It, uh, it completely destroys the F450. My F450 gets like 15 miles per gallon less in almost any situation than this truck. And this truck has significantly more tech features than my 450 or my wife's Expedition, as well as the ride on this truck is pretty dang phenomenal when you don't account for the seats, which I don't care for. So if this truck had more comfortable seats, I really, really think it would be the perfect truck but it doesn't have seats that I really care for. And because of that, it actually introduces a bit of regret. Do I regret getting the truck? No, I love the fact that we have it. I love the fact that we can use it. My wife loves driving it, but I regret the fact that this truck doesn't have comfortable seats because that's such an important aspect whenever you're gonna be in a truck for a long period of time. And you know, 9,000 miles on a truck that we've had for five months, um, is a good amount of miles. That means we're gonna be putting about 18, 19, 20,000 miles on this truck in a year, which is well above the average driving that most people do. And it's been my ability to kind of provide you information on what it's been like. Um, from a value perspective, $75,000 for this truck, do I think that's a fair price? In today's economy, I do, mainly because you know you could go look at a Ford King Ranch or you could look at a Platinum Limited, you could look at a Laramie Longhorn. All of these trucks are gonna be in the 70 to $80,000 price range for a half ton now. Any high trim crew cab four wheel drive truck is gonna be over 70 grand, probably under 80, but they're all gonna be extremely expensive. And if you get this truck in an ultimate package, it's probably gonna be closer to $80,000. So pickup truck prices, you know, it's one thing to say that they've priced themselves out of affordability, but the reality is that people are still buying them. And I know people are gonna say, well, that's the message you have to send, stop buying. Well, the fact is, if you want a new truck, you're gonna to have to pay the price that these new trucks demand. And inflation has really, really uh, impacted vehicle pricing. So I can definitely say that, that trucks are far more expensive than they've ever been, but people are still buying them. And they're coming with a lot more features and tech than they've ever come with in the past. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, it's, it's a cool truck to drive. I wish the seats were more comfortable for sure, but everything else about this truck definitely gives this thing super high scores, and I don't re regret the truck overall. It's, a, it's just a great truck. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up. We'll talk to you again real soon.